Today, we're back in Western Port. It's summertime, it's whiting time, and right now we're at the top end of the middle spit. It's pretty much slack water. It might be just starting to run out, and we're in some very shallow water here, 1.7 metres. There's a big sand hole behind us here. I'm sure I'm using the sound to find good areas, but also having a good set of polarised sunnies on is probably the best thing on these shallow areas. You can see the weed and the sand, I'm going to position the boat on the weed and then fish back into the sand. Let's get to it. One of the key ingredients to successful whiting fishing is the burley. Sure you'll catch plenty of whiting without burley, but what burley does is actually holds the school. It's got super burley pellets in there, crushed up pippies and pilchard. Pilchard is not something a lot of people use for their whiting fishing, but let me tell you the oily, fishy smell that comes out of it, they just absolutely love. Number one key is to get this in the water and down on the bottom. Now the rigs we're using today are a slight variation from the standard whiting rig, and what I'm so excited about is it's the new Black Magic Whiting Whacker and Whiting Snatcher. You'd be very familiar with the snapper snatcher that Black Magic make because we always use them and people absolutely love them and that's because they are so effective. The whiting snatcher, as the name says, snatcher, makes it similar to the snapper snatcher, come conveniently packed in this and they are just that perfect paternoster rig that makes fishing just so easy. And while they're made for whiting, they're going to be great on a whole lot of species you know, from brim to mullet to salmon in the surf to anything you really want, to catching live bait offshore, things like that. 12 pound black magic fluorocarbon, short droppers, and the famous KL10 hook. But what the guys have actually done is made it slightly smaller again, and it's even a touch thinner gauge, but still extremely strong. And then tied with this nice flashy material that's got a lot of UV in it, it catches any low light, and whiting absolutely love it. And then of course, a red bead, which is always handy if you're whiting fishing. This one does actually glow, so it's going to be great in deep water. Finished off with a black magic rolling swivel. Best thing of all, you just tie a sinker straight to the bottom of that, and you've got two hooks that you can fish straight up and down under the boat right near the burly pot. Great in tide, great in deep water. The other option is, and one that I would really truly love, is the whiting whacker. 12 pound litre again, the same hook, the same flashy material, the same little red bead, and this guy you can fish on a running rig, sinker above it. I've got one of these out now with an easy rig, the red plastic slider with the sinker on it. It's just so easy, I can't wait to get up to New South Wales as well, because let me tell you that, in the estuaries is going to be dynamite on brim and whiting, and on the surf, they are going to be absolutely deadly on the brim and whiting as well. Before I start fishing, there's one more thing I've got to do. I'm a huge fan of looking after my fish so it tastes as good as it possibly can. And by making an ice slurry, you can do just that. An ice slurry will actually go below freezing temperature, but without freezing. The water will become extremely cold, and when you put fish into that, it does two things. It humanely puts them to sleep, and best of all, it keeps them in the best eating quality you could ever imagine. To make your slurry, obviously ice into the esky. Salt water, you don't need a lot of it. If you put too much salt water in there, it will actually melt the ice and it won't stay as cold. So now, when we put the whiting in there, it humanely puts them to sleep very quickly. And best of all, stops lactic acid buildup in the meat, which stops the fish from tasting as good. This is the number one way to store your catch when you're fishing. So that's a whiting. Now I think I've collected the other line. Just for now I've got three rods in the water, but as the bite heats up I'll just drop straight back to two and then potentially even one because the worst thing you can do on your whiting is fish too many rods as all you'll start to do is miss fish 
Although, when you're fishing a circle hook like this, once they're on, they don't usually get off. Since they've stopped the netting in Western Port, the whiting fishing has gone from strength to strength, and this season has just been unbelievable. And part of the problem we're finding now is that there is just so many whiting in here that are this size. Not a bad problem to have because they're great eating, but when you're trying to find those really big fish now, you will need to fish the deeper water because the shallower banks are just covered in these guys. I mean, it's an unbelievably good problem to have. Um, that'd be like the world's biggest garfish. <laughs> Look at that, oops. That is a gar. I'm happy to catch those guys all day long. Wow, I haven't caught a gar like that for ages. Um, the toughest decision here is, do you eat him because they're sensational eating, or do I save that to take to Bermagui and use as a marlin bait? We'll decide later, but either way, it's not going back because I just love them. Big seagars as they're known, nice big red tip on their beak. And just sensational eating. You can actually fill at these and cut the rib cage out. And I reckon they're up there with being as good as, or if not better than King George Whiting. A fair call, I know, but I love them. With whiting fishing, when the action starts, it will generally be very fast and very furious for a short period of time, so you've got to make the most of it. So while I'm waiting, I'm just shelling a whole pile of pippies here. And to those pippies, I love to add just my bit of Stimulate Ultrabite. It's a feeding stimulant. You don't need a lot of it. Just mix that over the pippies and keep shelling them. That soaks in and it really does work. The other thing I've got is some squid, these little gotcha micro squid or baby squid. And the bonus to these little guys is you can put them on whole if you so wish, or a really good way to fish the slightly bigger ones is you rip the tube as one bait and the head as another bait. Because they're so small, they're very tender, very soft, and the whiting absolutely love them. That bait had no sooner hit the bottom than it got clobbered. It hasn't done a lot, but I'd say it's a whining. Yeah, and I've collected the other rig. There we go. They're in good nick too, these fish. And that circle hook is just so deadly. See how long that fish actually is. What do we got? Yeah, it's only 33 centimetres. Again, not a real big whiting, but we'll keep him alive for later. He's not going straight to the slurry. This snatcher style rig, which is a pattern oster, I'm fishing pretty much straight behind the burly pot. And then the running rig's sitting a bit further back, although it's got no bait on it because I got cleaned up. There we go. The running rig, single hook, leader, easy rig. I can easily change the sinker size to suit the tide or the location. And with this whiting fishing too, it is about moving. It's not about sitting in one spot. If you're not getting bites, move. Pull the anchor up, you don't have to move far. Like You could seriously move 50 metres that way and move up into two or three metres of water and all of a sudden start catching fish. Same thing, you could be in shallow, drop out deeper, you don't need to make these kilometre moves. Quite often, fishing in one football field of ground will get you your bag of whiting, no problem at all. Oh, done him. What's going on here? I dropped that fish. That's not good. Bad thing in whiting fishing, when you drop a fish, it'll quite often spook the school. 
And that's why I'm putting some in the live bait tank as well, because if I need to high grade some fish at all, you know, or if fish are too, not too small, because they're all size here, rather than letting them go back down into the school, I'll just keep them in here, because I'm really hoping some bigger fish will start to come along as this tide starts to pick up in pace. The key with finding these whiting is getting right on the edge of the bank. It's nice and dry over there at the moment. The tide's just starting to run in and these fish are currently in the deep water and they'll be sitting right along the edge of where it starts to come up. Here, you can see on the sounder, it's just starting to crawl up. We're in eight and a half metres here, six. So what I'm gonna do, and you can see I'm only about 20 foot off the bank, but it doesn't matter, because these fish, they're gonna get right up on here on the high tide. So I'll just back back a bit. I'm now in eight metres, and I'm just gonna swing the nose around and drop the anchor here, and we should be right along the edge of the bank. I've got Matt Sini just down there. It doesn't matter, that's the good thing with whiting, you can sit close to each other because they're just working their way all along these banks. We're in seven metres here. We should end up in a pretty well perfect position. We'll give this a go. If we do no good here, I'm gonna jump straight over onto the other side of the bank. There we go. Come on. That'll do. I just rebaited that. It's amazing how often with whiting, you'll wind in what looks to be a perfectly good bait, put a brand new one on, and it no sooner hits the bottom and you get a fish. Oh, 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 oh. Gotcha. Here we go, this is a decent one. This is a good whiting, really good whiting, I think. Come on, stay away from the burly pot. You always gotta watch with the whiting because they always make that lunge near the boat. This is a nice fish. Oh yeah. That's a whiting, look at that. That is awesome. I love that bottom hook on the whiting snatcher, obviously because it's just a couple of inches off the bottom, that's how it would sit in the current. That is the sort of whiting you'd be happy to catch any day of the week. What do we got? He's not even as big as I thought, he's 42, but in good condition, nice and fat. Straight in the slurry. This is why really you've got to be prepared for the whiting fishing. I've got the baits cut here. I'm just shelling more bait while well, I'm trying to, but the fish are starting to go pretty good. We're just getting that first trickle. And it's amazing, this rod here is probably 20 feet out the back. The two rods that I'm dropping straight down around the burly pot are getting hit every time. And that's because there's not a lot of flow. The burly that's coming out of the pot is just hanging around here, naturally bringing the fish into a very confined area. As I was saying before, once that tide flows, your burley will carry and you'll find that the rods out the back will get the fish as they start to work their way up. They can go to the live well. Now, this is the only thing, I've got no baits in the water. You pippy quickly. One thing we can do is, if I just go like that, a couple of metres out the back, that'll just swing its own way down to the bottom while I get a new bait on this. What have we got? Put a little strip of squid on one hook. Just like that. And a pippy on the other. And see that, that's being sort of half sucked or chewed. It's no good, the whiting for some reason don't tend to like to come back to a bait that has been a bit chewed on. So take the time to rebait. Get a lovely tangle. 
and we're away. Right, there we go. Don't think it's a whiting. Oh, hang on, it is. It's another good one. Look at that. He hasn't done anything yet. Stay away from that burly pot. Now he's waking up. This tide has really backed off. We're pretty much on slack water or the just the absolute first trickle of the run in tide. And all of a sudden, you start to get into those really good quality fish. Another beautiful big whiting. The best thing I love about these guys is just what you get at the end, which is one of the finest feeds you could imagine. While that whiting fishing up the top end of the spit was very, very good and we got some nice fish, I'm really hoping to try and find just a couple of really big whiting. So for the last hour and a half of this run out tide, I'm going to head down to one of my favourite areas, that Balnarring Summers Flinders area, and see if we can find ourselves just a couple of beautiful big fish. Let's get to it. Oh, there he goes. There we go. Ooh. Not sure about this. Yeah, beautiful whiting. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Look at that. And here in these parts, it's certainly not about lots of fish. It's just about some absolute quality. Look at that little KL10. Whiting snatcher, right in the corner of the jaw, and that fish was not going to get off. Pop that hook out. It's not actually that fat of whiting for down these parts, but it's still a good one. In the ice slurry for you. A really good thing to do, too, is keep repacking your burly pot. As you can see, there's still heaps of stuff in there, but with the current ripping through it, it actually gets all packed down and some of the goodness gets washed out of it. So what I tend to do is put it back in here. There's a couple of big sinkers in there for a bit of extra weight, but this has got more pellets, more mashed up pilchards and stuff going on in here. So what that actually does is reflavor the burley and add to what has already been washed out. There we go, there's pippy shells in there, there's pilchards, there's pellets. A couple of big sinkers for extra weight, although these pots are heavy in this tide, the extra weight is very, very handy. And you'll see, as soon as I drop this over the side, a big cloud will come straight out of that pot. And as you can imagine, down on the bottom, that's gonna send out the big dinner bell to a whole pile of whiting. Come on. Oh yeah, decent whiting. Look at that. Tide's fairly ripping. And the bonus to the fast moving water is it tends to make the whiting bite fairly good. That guy there, I have my head down, getting some more bait ready. And you just hear the drag go on the reel, it's great. This tide's really flowing quite hard at the moment. This two ounce bomb sinker just isn't quite making it to the bottom or staying down there for long enough. And the bonus to having just a little dropper loop tied at the bottom of the rig means I can very easily unloop that sinker. I'm left with that. I've got a three ounce bomb sinker here. I just loop that straight on over the sinker. And we're back in fishing. Jeez, 
just, I'll just put that bait down. And it's amazing how often that happens. You put a new bait in and straight away it gets nabbed. I'm just gonna move this over here. It's pretty solid. Oh, get away from that burly pot, that's the problem. Oh no, this is bad. This is really bad. I can see my fish here. I'm gonna back that drag off because he's caught on the burly pot. Now, just try and get this under here. It's not really working and I reckon I've lost that fish. No, he's still there, I think. Yeah, it's a nice whiting. It's a beautiful whiting. And he's seriously caught on that damn burly pot rope. And everything is caught. I'm gonna lose this fish, I reckon. No, that's a whiting. That is an absolutely beautiful whiting. And this was the problem. I actually forgot for a second that I had the burly pot down and normally I've got it on the downrigger and it's up out of the way and this is a great reason for why I should have been using the downrigger but that is an absolute donkey of a whiting look at that just awesome circle hook going nowhere and he actually started to straighten that hook out on that rope but we still got it that is absolutely sensational look at that Nice, big, clean ocean whiting. Well, we're back mid-tide. The bite certainly slowed a bit. It's time for me to pull the pin and put back some of these smaller whiting 